and welcome back to another episode of Kurt and Paul Discuss. I'm Kurt. I'm Paul. And today we are going to discuss mile 22. So uh, I think we have some mixed emotions on this movie <laughs> here. Uh, you know, um, I'll tell you, I, I found it entertaining. Um, I usually like uh, Peter Berg's films, yeah. um, but this, though it was it was action packed and you know interesting, it did miss the mark a little bit for me. Uh, what do you think? I want to punch everybody involved in this movie in the face. <laughs> <laughs> the writer, the directors, the actors, everybody. I just want to punch them for wasting my. Okay, it was it was. A little entertaining. I like some. Okay, it had the guy from the raid in it. Yeah. Um, he's a stunt man in real life. Okay. And uh, his name is Le- Le- Ico Voaz. Ico or Ico Voaz? Ico, something like that. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but uh, he was in the raid. He was also in Force Awakens. He had a little cameo. But uh, he was the most entertaining part of the movie. Yeah, he could fight, man. Yeah, he could tell. He really knew what he was doing. But, oh my God. The writing seemed a little lazy on this movie, in my opinion. It was like, uh, you know, Mark Wahlberg is kind of like what we discussed last week when uh, we were talking about um, uh, Jason Statham, that he has one character that he plays in all his movies. Yeah. And Mark Wahlberg is kind of the same thing. I mean, he was the same guy in uh, uh, Departed as he was in Transformers, you know? The same character, Wisecracking. Uh, what did he watch? I don't remember any Wisecracks. Yeah. I think that's what they were going for in this movie. They were trying to... He was speaking really fast throughout the whole movie and I guess in an attempt to make him seem like intelligent or something. Yeah, well, that's what they and, were playing and, at. Like. And it really didn't work. No, it it really didn't. did not work. Um, but he was speaking too fast. He was, he was just quoting. Was he quoting? He was like giving all this these platitudes and yeah, he was trying to quote like different historical figures and to to bring across the idea that he was super intelligent. Well, see, okay. I'm really, I, I just have to say right off the bat, I'm really indifferent on Mark Wahlberg as an actor. I've seen some things that he's really good at, like The Departed, and some things that he's not so good in, or just, just okay. I mean, he's one of these actors who gets sparks because he's, he's fairly good looking, he's muscular, he's an action, he looks like an action hero. You and know. he got a, he got an attitude, you know. Yeah, he's he got, got an that, attitude. It's kind of like Arnold Schwarzenegger. He got that Jersey I, attitude, or no? He's from Boston. Boston, Boston attitude. Well, but you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger didn't get parts because he was a a, a thespian, <laughs> this thespian, <laughs> this great actor. He Just got he got off. parts because <laughs> he's Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's this huge looking, right? Grand, you know. Right. monstrosity of a man. That's why Mark Wahlberg is part. But like, he can act sometimes. I mean, like I said, the part was the best example. The difference, the difference with with this movie and the part was the part. His lines were actually funny. Yeah, that's what I said. The and writing they were, was late. They were trying to get. They were trying to get that same vibe, and it just did not work. I mean, and I want to slap him in the face and, every time he talked. And. Uh, I think he did a good job in uh, Lone Survivor, you know, and he and Peter Berg worked together in that movie. Yeah, which I haven't seen. Um, and I think the acting was really good in that one. Um, but, you know, it, it's got a lot to do with your supporting cast, too. And where in the world did Ronda Rousey come from yeah. to be acting in a movie with stars of that caliber? Full disclosure, I cannot stand Ronda Rousey. I detest her. <laughs> you know, I got a, a little video. <laughs> uh, I didn't know there was a. We're going to have a spoil some stuff. I want to cut right to this thing. One thing that totally took me out of the movie. Near the very end, spoilers, 
So if you haven't watched it, I'm going to spoil a really big reveal and not something that really came from, this was like the very end of the movie. Mm -hmm. The, the the guy's walking away and he says, say, say hi to your mother for me. Do you know where that, that came from? No, no. Nah. <laughs> I thought he was talking about mother as far as reference. Well, there was this thing in the movie where, um, the okay, this this movie is about kind of a poor man's version of the IMF war, right? Because they don't have the gadgets and the and the disguises and all that. They're a little bit more realistic, but they're they're this force called Overwatch, right? Right. And so the they, CIA, yeah, secret, special operations, right? And they take on cases like, like the IMF force in those Mission Impossible movies, right. kind, kind of the same concept. Um, so, um, I forgot my point. <laughs> you had to tell about that video. Well, okay, so near the end of the movie, um, the guy is walking away, and 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 he says, "Say hi to your mother for you." And you kind of think, well, well, the reason he says it is because they were referencing the the little tech team that guides Overwatch, which is headed by John Malkovich. Right. So. And they call John they, Malkovich mother. They call him mother, and, and he calls them every child one, child two, child all the different operators, child one, two, or three, or whatever. So you. In the movie, that's a reference. You're thinking he's referencing them, but as a side, it's actually from that Saturday Night Live skit that they used to have making fun of Mark Wahlberg. And the signature line from that skit was, say hi to your mother for me. And, uh, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, oh yeah, it's like say hello to your mother for me. Yeah. Well, I'll just play it real quick. To, All right. To, to... Hey, I'm Mark Wahlberg, you guys know me. It's the holiday season. Let's go talk to some Christmas animals. <laughs> hey, sheep. How's it going? I like your fur. You're with the first Christmas, right? Let me ask you something. You guys know it's going to be a big thing? Okay. Well, it's great to meet you. Say hi to your mother for me, okay? <laughs> so... The basic premise of that of the joke on the Saturday Night Live show was he talks to animals. Is Mark Wahlberg talks to animals was was the was the little skit that they did. And I don't know they did like maybe three or four of them. It's like that whole Boston persona, <laughs> you know. Say, say hello to your mother for me. Right, but um, so that's what they were referencing in the movie near the end. Okay. And it totally took me out of it because I'm familiar with that sketch. <laughs> I was like, did he just say and the the guy the guy's English is so bad, you're like I was almost like, did he say say hi to your mother? Did he really say that? So I was just it it totally just I wish I'd have known that when I saw <laughs> that I would have I would have appreciated it a lot more. I was like right. Well and but, the, here's the other thing about him. Oh, Mark Wahlberg's character is supposed to be so smart. Mm -hmm. It took him a minute to put together that you know that mother was in trouble. You right. know, yeah. He drives away and puts his only surviving uh, spoilers, only surviving uh, counterpart on the plane with this guy, and he drives away thinking, "Say hello to your mother." What in the world did you mean by that? And he's supposed to be like Rain Man, smart. You know. I don't know. It just didn't make a lot of sense to me. Yeah. What I didn't get, okay. At the at the opening of the movie, they 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 raid a safe house, a Russian safe house. Yeah, in suburban America. Yeah, and they kill everybody. And you later find out that her source for this raid was this guy. Right? right. And then he turns himself into the embassy of whatever country. They never say what country they're in, right? It's some. Well, they said the South Asia or something. They said Southeast Asia. Okay. And then they named the city, but I I wasn't familiar with the name of the 
the so street. So you don't know really where they are because... I guess they didn't want to like step on anybody's specific toes. Because the premise is this government of whatever this country they're in has set dirty bombs all over the world. Right, or yeah, the... So, so this guy, he he's he's the... Uh, Maggie from... Walking Dead. Walking Dead is in this movie. Uh, he's the source for that their first raid, and he's the source for these this later thing about the dirty bombs. What was My it? problem Cassium, was, Cassium powder. Yeah, something like that. Some guy would be. It was like up. he was talking about how he's trying to explain how the equivalent of one of these discs is what they called them. Mm-hmm. These discs each had this Cassium powder, which was. The equivalent to both Nagasaki and Hiroshima, and instead of having to have a plane to drop it and an army to deliver it, he said a kid who could empty an envelope on the street could take out a whole country. Which I don't think is, I think that has been debunked. The whole premise of a dirty bomb, I don't think can actually happen. I, I I I was watching some kind of I forget some show, and they were talking about the viability of dirty bomb. And they were like, it's really not. No, I wouldn't the, want the to, technical. I wouldn't want to test that theory. <laughs> well, I mean, the, to 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 make one um, do what 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 you see in these movies, it would take too much technical skill. So I I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't speak on that. But I've heard from the intelligence community, it's not really possible to make well, one. So that would suck. Yeah. But but, but there's a lot of but that's besides that would... the point. The, my my whole point with the, the dirty bomb angle, he gave them the intel about this this Russian safe house and they kill everybody. Then you find out he's working for the Russians. Does that make any sense to you? Why would he Well they I can see the rough draft of how this story is supposed to be believed. Okay, but you know, you find out that they kill the son of a high-ranking Russian official. Yet, why would the son of a high-ranking Russian official be in a... But the, more to the point, they're using... The, this guy was working for the Russians, and he gives up this woman's son. And then later, she, she vows revenge on Overwatch... And she uses the same guy that set up her son to get the revenge. Does that make any sense? No, no. It, and this thing would have okay. You've seen enough of like uh, stuff that went down in Afghanistan and Iraq, right? Mm-hmm. To know that if you had some guy that plowed through a roadblock and then gets right, out yeah. holding something in his hand, he would get shot. He'd have, he'd have, first he'd have been shot before he even got out of the car because he broke through the roadblock. Right. But then he breaks through the roadblock, gets out with something that could be misconstrued as a detonating device, well, and he a, made it into the embassy. There was a lot of stuff. You know why he didn't get shot? He was wearing plot armor. Because <laughs> <laughs> Mark Wahlberg was wearing a lot of plot armor. You remember that, that scene where they get cornered in the little deli or whatever? Uh-huh. And he walks out in the street, and nobody shoots him. He yeah. goes up and talks to the guy chasing him, the guy in charge of all the people chasing him. He just goes up to the guy and talks to him. Which, him. which that guy was the most useless character ever. But but why didn't they shoot him right then? Uh, they would have. It didn't make any sense. The, 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 and how did uh, a uh, hand grenade go off in the restaurant and took out his partner's legs, but... Mark Wahlberg didn't have a scratch. That's what I'm saying. You could, <laughs> Mark and, and Mark Wahlberg, you know, that's, they had that one scene where he, he's like, "I'm completely calm." You're completely calm because you know you're not going to die. Right. <laughs> you're the only one that's not going to die in this movie because everybody else dies, right? Everybody <laughs> else dies. And it's like, well, I don't know. Did John Malkovich die? Because at the end, he was sitting. Oh there, yeah, he was kind of wandering out, this, wandering out and bleeding onto his shoes. And I was like, that's what I'm saying. Everybody they need to survive to, to be think, in the sequel survive. That's what I'm saying. I'm thinking they were doing that in the unlikely event that they get a sequel to this movie. Because <laughs> this movie's not doing well. No. They're hoping that like five million 
is projected to make seventeen million off a thirty five million dollar budget. It's not Yeah, you don't usually get a new <laughs> job when you spend thirty five million and only get seventeen back. <laughs> so That's just not good math. Yeah. And they left it, there was, they've left it open-ended. It really wasn't an ending because you don't really find out the guy gets on the plane and you find out he's the bad guy and that he double-crossed them. And then you have Mark Wahlberg. They cut to Mark Wahlberg talking about yeah, he's failures to, of imagination and whatnot. And he's having to explain himself to... Uh, and I'm like, and then the movie ends, you're like, huh? <laughs> and then they're like, well, what about well, whatever uh, Maggie's character's name was? So what about her? I've already told you what happened. Well, you didn't tell us. Yeah. What happened to Did her? the plane crash or? But they were like, he's in the cockpit. He's in the cockpit. But then they, they never show what happened. So all that was left open ended so that they could they could do the sequel. try to put a part two. And you know what? I've seen worse movies get a part two, even if they didn't make money. Well, Sometimes they'll do them back to back and make them all under one budget. Yeah. So we'll see. I don't. I don't I'll be waiting for Netflix. On they they were planning on doing a trilogy, a trilogy from the go. Why would they call it Mile Twenty Two? That seems like a lazy title. For, I mean, you know why they call it Mile Twenty Two, right? Because it was the distance from the embassy to the air to, to the airstrip. So what are you gonna call the the, the sequel? Mile Twenty Three? Like three thousand miles later. <laughs> I mean, it didn't. The, the everything about this movie was lazy. The writing was lazy. The characters were lazy. This the was name a of the rushed. Movie, this is yeah. a rushed job. It, it had to like, be a rushed job because I I would think that you want to do a sequel, call it Overwatch because that's what the group name. I mean, that right? would have had like um, <laughs> pop culture meaning too. People would have been like, oh, Overwatch. Overwatch. <laughs> First movie over. Overwatch. The Golden Circle was the next movie. <laughs> Or over something you know they could just they could add in but mile twenty two you can't make a sequel to that the ma- mile twenty two the sequel <laughs> I guess uh, mile twenty two part two yeah or uh, something Avenue I mean, B <laughs> and my favorite part of the movie is when she dies oh my goodness because <laughs> I can't stand when she does the little pouty face to try to look like hard. I hate, I just can't stand running around. She, she's really quite attractive when she smiles. I gotta actually... Yeah, the, you know, she was in the Twizzler commercial before the movie Because look, I got, a, <laughs> I, I got a, a picture of her smile, and I wish she would just... Well, you know. I mean, she's not, she's she not bad looking when she smiles, but when she does, she does pouty face... I mean, she kind of looks hot there. If yeah. <laughs> I'm going to admit. From the neck down. <laughs> but that face, I hate that that constipated look. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm so tough. Look at me. I'm so tough. You know, she looked kick your right. ass. She looked that way right before that one girl beat the shit out of her. <laughs> I hate, I just, I can't stand her. But look and at, look at Peter Bird. Oh, what's up with that hair? He looks like a homeless man. <laughs> That's why he had to rush this movie out because he was out of money. I mean, he used to be he used to be good looking. He used to be like a heartthrob leading man type, right? All right, yeah. He looks like he's on drugs. Who is this dude right here? I don't know. Oh he, well, well, Peter. You know what? He's probably. I I guarantee he's like Mark Wahlberg's stunt double. Look at their hair. <laughs> oh, what's up with this plaid shirt he's wearing the whole movie? I don't, they must have had, um, well, you said it was a $35 million budget. <laughs> it must, that must have been all in explosions and bullets. You don't, you don't see Tom Cruise wearing plaid shirts. <laughs> I mean, like I said, hey. this, is, this is a poor man's Mission Impossible movie, is what it was. Yeah. And, except there's no, there was no strategy. They just drive. They get out and they just drive. They don't send a, a diversion to throw off the bad guys. They just drive through roadblocks and they shoot everything that moves. You know there's there was no there's no kind of strategy. And there was the location was what? The house the location shoots was the house that they first um raided and then 
the road from the embassy to the airstrip, and that was it. Two locations. So that was the, the more the more we talk about it, the less I'm liking this movie. <laughs> <laughs> They had some, like I said, they had, there was a couple scenes where I was like, whoa, that was that was some good action. But like well, I said, most of them were, was with this, this guy from the raid. And it's like, I, but none of the characters were like, well, I, I hated, and this, I think this was the uh, first. They had actually two females in the movie carrying guns. I don't think I've ever seen that in any movie, but neither one of them had, had a personality. It's like they're. It, I hate it. I hate when they they put a woman in the movie and, and something that's usually a male role, and instead of giving them a real personality, they just make them try to make them tough and let them drop some f bombs to to make you think they're there tough. There was um, Maggie's uh, character in this. I say Maggie. What, what's your real name? Lauren Cohen. Cohen. Yeah, Lauren Cohen. <laughs> she. I don't have anything against cursing, and I do it from time to time. Yeah. But well, yeah, we it was un- some noodles, hot yeah, noodles, hot noodles <laughs> bring it out in me. <laughs> but she said she was cussing to the point I got uncomfortable about it. Yeah, where I was like, "How many times can you say the f word in one sentence?" <laughs> and she was like. <laughs> She's going through a divorce, and we don't care. Yeah, we don't. We really. Don't. Why would you join the CIA? Well, that was the only way Peter Berg was going to get his cameo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like she plays. He plays her husband, her ex-husband. But it's like we don't care that you get a divorce. It's like every every freaking spy movie, somebody's getting a divorce. Why would you join some super super secretive government yeah. team and think you can? Had that played Had a, a role life. in her making some mistakes along the way? Yeah. You know, I could understand inserting that part of the storyline, right? But it, it really didn't affect her doing her job. It didn't have anything. It was just a distraction from the story that we were already bored with anyway. I think they, they did it to make us sympathize with her or something. They're like, oh, she's really harsh. They do that with women, you know, in harsh <laughs> roles. How about when she was like, crying to that guy. The guy was coming to kill her. Yeah. And she's like, oh, please don't. I'm a mother. <laughs> and then she stabs him in the neck with a piece of glass. She stole that from Carol from The Walking Dead. You know, Carol does <laughs> yeah. that. There was I think Carol did it better. She's like, oh, please, please. And then she like pulls out a, like a automatic <laughs> 44 <laughs> man. They never show the gun, but she like shoots all these, all these guys. Wow. God, it's so bad. I agree. I mean, if you want a good example of how to do a tough female character, Scarlett Johansson in these Avenger movies. We need you to come in. Are you kidding? I'm working. This takes precedence. I'm in the middle of an interrogation. This moron is giving me everything. I don't give everything. Look, you can't pull me out of this right now. Natasha. Barton's been compromised. Let me put you on hold. She actually has a personality. You know what I'm saying? And Do she's a, a strong, and she, she can kick ass, right? But she's still a woman. She still and, and you know, there's those interrogation scenes in the Avengers where she's like trying to. Um, she's interviewing Loki, and he thinks. He thinks he's running the the whole interrogation, but she's actually inter. She, he thinks he's he's dominating the conversation, but what it, she's actually doing is allowing him to to hang himself, right? She's actually interrogating him without him knowing. Right, right, right. I won't touch Barton, not until I make him kill you. Slowly, intimately, in every way he knows you fear. And then he'll wake just long enough to see his good work. And when he screams, I'll split his skull. This is my bargain, you mewling quim. You're a monster. <laughs> oh no. You brought the monster. So, Banner. That's your play. What? And, and she's trying to get at what, what his plan is. She finds out, oh, he's gonna he's gonna unleash the Hulk. 
That that's that's how you do a female a, a, a tough female character. Perfect mm-hmm. example. And then there's a other earlier scene in Avengers where she's getting interrogated by those Russians and she's doing the same thing. She's like, "You really think I'm pretty?" <laughs> and she's like just acting like like ditzy. Yeah, she, and they're not they, they don't understand that she's collecting information from them. There's because um, they're not threatened by her. There's a book I'm reading uh, right now, and it's called the Brain uh, Brain Rush Trilogy. And uh, there was a line in it where there's these uh, these women, and they're uh, like highly trained assassins, and their mother had taught them that a woman has an ability to get a man to do whatever they want if they're smart enough to use it. Mm-hmm. You know, and so. Of course, in that situation, a woman, a strong woman is going to use her being a woman to her advantage instead of trying to be a man. Yeah, and that's basically what they, they're doing with these movies. They're trying to make them, oh, they can be, a woman can be as tough as a man. Well, did you really want, we already got uh, the, we already got this meathead. <laughs> Do we need three meatheads? Yeah, that's what it was. It was just a, Car full of meatheads. Yeah, it was like, and then one martial artist. And what well, was that other guy with the beard who got? Well, he was a meathead too. Yeah, there were. I mean, you need some contrast between the characters. Yeah, they, they didn't. They didn't take time to build the characters. They didn't time. They didn't take time to build kinda, a story. They just. I mean, it was just like it's like pulling the the pin on a grenade. And just I mean, watch it know, explode. But you know, I rail against a lot of cliches in these action movies. They always have the black black guy for comic relief. They got the the suave, or they got the the cocky white action hero guy. They got the black guy for comic relief. They got the woman seductress. They could have used a, a little bit more of that in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> the one, the one black dude in it. I mean, it was a pathetic attempt at making him comical, and even his lines were stupid. Because yeah. they were like, oh, let me do it, boss. That was it. He wanted to yeah, use he had the like drone. Two, he had like two lines. Yeah. He wanted to use the drone to blow somebody up, and that was it. But. So. Let's just get down to. Don't see this movie. Yeah, I wouldn't either. I wouldn't go to this movie. Don't, I mean, see, you, you, you wait. If you're going to see it, wait for it. Come out on Netflix or something, but do not go see. Yeah, this movie. you know it's it's worth watching while you're playing Candy Crush on your phone and it's playing <laughs> in the background on Netflix. <laughs> but Mark Wahlberg is so annoying in this movie. He does that thing with the rubber band. I know, I didn't... What was that? Well, you know, according to the storyline, it was the way to center himself because he was so smart. And it made his mind well, he faster had, than everybody He's like else. had OCD or something, or Asperger syndrome. Or, he, That's what I'm something. saying, man. They were, he had they were all over of, the map on trying to explain why he was this. But it, ultimately what he came across was an arrogant asshole. Right. Bottom he got, line. He got that down, but it's like yeah. there's nobody to root for in this, this movie. Nope. Everybody was unlikable. The action was good but sometimes it made no sense some of the things that the the plot armor that the characters you know yeah I didn't like any I didn't like anybody in this movie I really didn't I mean yeah. now I thought I liked this movie more than I did now that we got to <laughs> talking about it that's why I enjoy doing this you know yeah yeah because um, I'll be honest I just went and saw it and then came over here to do the do this and I really hadn't had time enough to really think about how bad it was. So, better luck next time, Peter Berg. I know you got it in you, dude. Yeah. This wasn't it. And, and do do something about that hair and yeah, and like and, a homeless man. Just go ahead and shave, man. It's it's gone. So just yeah, shave it off. Wear a cap man. like I do. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Come well, up. we appreciate you guys coming by for this episode and. Uh, we're going to keep rocking and rolling and doing this thing, and we'll see you next time. See you later. <laughs>